All right, welcome back. We're going to continue on this one we're here where we'll go demo the for loop, the while loop, and the do while. And I believe the way I will do this is I'm going to change at line 31 instead of not accepting any arguments from the command line, we're going to add this standard way of accepting arguments. We're going to have an integer argc and a character pointer to argv, which is an array. Right, so notice how I type that. A character pointer to argv, which is an array. In other words, more than one, because you can have more than one command line argument. In fact, here's an example. This would be argument, the first argument, <laughs> second argument, third argument, and so forth. So argc is how many of these are on the line. So in this case, argc would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here, argc would just be 1. So, and then this, the array, this would be each entry is basically represented by that. Anyway, the reason I wanted to do that, when I'm going to display the for loop, if I'm going to, to display the for loop, what I'll do, and watch closely, for open print. So you have your condition that you put in there, and then we're going to do something based on that condition. Well, here the condition we want is for integer i equals argc. Actually, I take that back. Integer i equal to 0. So we're going to start at 0. And then we're going to say for i less than um, argc. All right, so this is the starting condition. This is the condition that has to hold true for you to do whatever's in this for loop. And the last item i++ plus plus is what we want to do every time we go through the loop. So this says for i equals 0, so we're starting at 0, as long as i is less than arg c, well, we know arg c is always going to be at least 1. Right? It's going to always be at least So if, if, if i is less than that, we go through, and in our case, what we're going to do is Oh, let's say printf, and let's say arg v, watch carefully, percent %d, colon, percent %s, backslash n. And then I'm going to print the value of i, and the print the value of arg v of 0. Or pardon me, i of i. Now watch this one very carefully. This is super important. The for loop will continue to do this. It starts here. i is an integer, right? And, and as long as i is less than this, we will continue to do this. And every time we do it, after we do it, we'll increment the value of i. Now, Let's click on run. Do you wish to continue? And, and before I press yes or no, our count for this one will be just a single one. Right? We just have a single argument. So I'll say, yes, I want to continue. Wow, look at that. Argv of zero is main. Hmm. Wonder if we said period slash main one two three and I pressed enter. You want to continue? Yes. Whoa, look at that. This is a great example of using a for loop because you know, based on argc, the argument count, you know exactly how many times you want to do something. 
In this case, we're printing out the arguments. Right, that's what we're doing to demonstrate this for loop. So that's one way you can do it. There's another way. We could say while, and we could have some condition, and as long as that condition is true, we will we could uh, print out this. So another way we could do this is say while. In fact, let's do this. Let's have a integer j equals zero. And we'll say while j is less than arg count. So here's my condition. While j is less than arg count, let's do the exact same thing. But be careful when I say the exact same thing. What's different, instead of using i, we use j. In fact, it's showing us the error right now because this is undeclared. Here, the nice thing about declaring it here is only valid within this for loop. So the value of i, although it's known inside this for loop, it's not known out here. So that's why we're getting this error. And so change your i to a j and change this to a j. And very importantly, j plus plus. Right, we want to increment the value of j every time we do this. So this is an example where you have what's sometimes called a sentinel, sometimes called a flag. As long as this condition is true, while this condition is true, and remember the definition of true is anything that's not zero. So if, when it says j is less than arg c, as long as that's true, it continues to do it. And when I click on run, so yes, Notice we got both our for loop and our while loop. In fact, maybe let's modify it. Let's do print s. Let's say for. We'll say for loop. And then here, let's say we'll do a put string, a while loop. So I click on run. Yes, I want to continue. So notice our for loop and our while loop give the exact same output. In fact, when I say main one, two, three, yes, I want to continue. Again, notice the for loop and the while loop have the exact same output. Yes, that's cool. All right, next, this will be the final part of this demonstration. Let's do the what's called the do while. So here, since I've, I've used j, I'll go ahead and use it again. I'll say j equals zero, because I can reuse it since it's outside of this while loop. I could reuse it, so I'm going to say j equals zero. Do. So here I'm going to do something while some condition is true. Well, as long as j is less than arg c. As the condition here, notice the difference, very important. A while loop checks the condition at the beginning. The do while checks the condition at the end. So here, we'll literally grab the same code and paste it right here. So I'll say do while. And in fact, using our convention, I'll say put string the, I'll say a do while loop. All right, let's run it. Yes, we want to continue. Ooh, look, all three have the exact same output. And let's say main, how about red and green? Yes, I want to continue. Notice we've got red and green, red or main, red and green, main, red, and green, main, red, and green for all three. Now, as I've said many times, you can pause the video. 
you can look at all three of these. I mean, this is it. This is how you do looping. The for loop, when you know the exact count. A while loop, when you're not sure, you know, you want to do something while some condition is true. And a do while, when you want to do it always at least one time, because the, the check is at the end, versus with the while loop, the check is at the beginning. Okay, this is the, this really finishes up, uh, I guess, <laughs> I guess to be consistent, why don't we say we made another minor change to this one. This will be our version 1.2. So when we click on run, we'll have our 1.2 version of our program here. Well, as always, make sure your code is running like we have it here. And this finishes up version 1. And, uh, Pretty, pretty good right now. We've made a lot of progress. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks for watching.